their heart will no longer be stony because God was going to be working within them so that they would be able to walk in his statue. Yeah. That was a promise. Right. Yeah. He was giving them a new disposition of mind because before it was vastly different. So he took them from being sinful to holy, from living a carnal life in which, which the law of God is written. You can find that in Jeremiah 31, 33. Then they will then be given a hand where there would be no famine. So they would be like what Sam's one says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in the season. They would receive a blessing. Yes. You can find that in Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14. In doing all of this, I will put a mirror before you, meaning I let you remember all your iniquities, mm -hmm. sinful ways, and your abominations. Yes. All of this wasn't done for your sake, thus said the Lord, but for my holy name. Yes. Therefore, this message is for each and every one of us to look within ourselves. Anything, anything within this world, word applies to us. The remedy is change our ways. Yes. New heart, new spirit, and then.
the young people give their services to the Lord from a young age, you know, he grows them, he builds them in grace. Yes. And he, he protects them and he keeps them in a special way. So if those of you that grow in the church, like me who sleep on the one on floor, and grow in the church, feel proud. Yes. You know, to be a child of the faith. The, 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 the lesson, I promise that won't be long. It has some key points that I want to touch. One is for you, Pastor. Yes. <laughs> because when I really consider, you know, I say it must have been a divine inspiration or the spirit of God, the voice of God speaking to me. Amen. To bring the book of Ezekiel to the church. And one of the prior speakers taught you that the book of Ezekiel, is the prophet Ezekiel wrote to restore Israel. Come on, come on. From a broken state. The prophet Ezekiel is the prophet that deals within that church with structure. Because God had found a special type of favor in the prophet Ezekiel. That God showed him a vision one day. But in showing him the vision, it was to put structure in place. Amen. May I say to you, the man of God, and I trust that you will hear from God on the behalf of the brethren here that dwell here. There are two sets of people in the church. Amen. One set of people, because it's Ezekiel we're talking about now. Belong to the, the flesh portion. May I say to the church that these people are still dealing with pain. The flesh has to do with pain. Come on, yes. Come on. But the, 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 the bones, the second portion of the people in the church are of the, the bone portion of the church. Amen. The bone portion deals with the structure. Come on, come on. These are the people you could put in position. You know the structure of the church. My Lord. The framework. Amen. Because think about the framework for instance, you know, if, if something is wrong within the framework, then the whole structure yes, is it's, it's, it's compromised. Yes. <laughs> So, the prophet Ezekiel is the, he's the man in charge of dealing with those things within the church. And, 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 you see, whether we don't understand how God loves us. The, as a child going in the church, you know, I used to hear the old time Baptists talk about, they used to say Israel a lot. And he used to talk about the house of Israel. And he used to refer to the church as Israel. And I used to say, I'm a child, but is it Israel a country? Mm -hmm. And you know, as I grew up, I come to realize that because Israel, God had chosen Israel mm -hmm. to be his holy nation. Yes, to be his people. And he said that you will be my people and I will be your God. Come on. And because of that, he had put some things within Israel, the law of God was placed in Israel. And he established a very important and special covenant relationship Amen. with Israel. Amen. That is the reason why the church is Israel today. Because the church represents God, nation, a nation of people, be it Canada, Toronto, be it New York, be it New Jersey, be it Trinidad or St. Vincent, yeah. that church is one foundation. Yeah. It is Jesus Christ. She is a new creation by the water and the blood. So, when Israel, you see, Israel, all of God loves them. They're such a stubborn, stiff necked, you know, people. But yet God loved them. Yes. And what had happened, you know, so now when God, he said, all the time with them people, he allowed the enemy yes. to take them captive. Yes. Yes. And this is what had happened. They had become so captive.
captivated by the enemy that they could no longer possess their own land. So they were in a strange land. Amen. Imagine trying to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. But you know what? Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you know God loves me. Because it wasn't, listen, I want you to show city your neighbor, it's nothing that you have done. I want to say to each other, it's nothing that it's nothing good that we have done. Nothing. Nothing. He said, not for this, it's for my sake. But yeah, what he said? Amen, my sake. He said, for my name's sake. For my name. This is why he called now a restoration to the house of Israel. He said, for my name's sake, because the very name, they have profaned it. Amen. They take it among the heathen, which is among the unbeliever. And they profane it so he said, for my name's sake, not so much for all you. Yes. Not because you do anything good. Mm. But for my name's sake, I will remember all you. Yes. So you know what he said? Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. Yes. And you shall be clean from all your filthiness. Yes. And from your idols will I cleanse you. Mm. And the church today, we still have idols, eh? I want to tell you what the idols do to us. Idols are designed, or they are there, they are in place, to distract you, to get you to worship away from the throne of grace. Amen. And this pastor, some years ago, you know, when I, I met him, he preached at St. Francis, he said, you know, Babylon, we need to break down Babylon in our heart. Because we sin, come out of Babylon, but it's in the heart. So this heart has to go through. Come, come on, come on. So because the idol we made you eh? We idolize many things. Sometimes we idolize people. Sometimes we idolize beauty, world, you know, possession, things that we inherit along the way. And if these things they distract us, the idols is to cause you to, to worship away from the throne of grace. Now imagine that. You know something, you know the Baptist service is going on. And as young people, we have so much things you could do right now. I could go on Facebook, Instagram, the place hot, all you know. Yes. <laughs> and think about sitting in church week after week. Sometimes they have convention in the church, we in church all week. Sometimes we have pointing on. Man, I can't have you taking the bus every night. We in church every day. But what I am saying is imagine all that. And your worship is not going to the right place. Imagine all of that sacrifice and you're worshiping away from the throne of God. Now we don't say that the devil come to steal, kill, but you know we don't say that the devil have a mandate to deceive. Because he's not going to come and say, I am the devil, I am the antichrist. He's going to come and blend in as one of the enemies. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Because it say I will cause you. This restoration that we are looking for, for this church for centuries that will be restored for a new heart and a new spirit to come and to, to manifest itself. We need to realize that being in church is good, getting baptized, be, getting baptized, let me say getting baptized is a great thing. Yes. Amen. Yes. Being in church is a good thing. Yes. But more important than that is we need the Holy Spirit to come in and to do the things that we cannot do for ourselves. We need, in order to get a new heart, this is a surgery, you 
know. Amen. Master, Amen. Yes. Amen. This thing, this is big people thing. Amen. I was very humble when I see that it was me that was, you know, called to touch on this lesson. Because, you know, the, the Bible says, the, 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 just think about it. How on the holy we are. The tongue. It said the tongue can no man tame. So it said that if no man could tame the tongue, then only a spirit. So this restoration, this new heart, this surgery needs to be done through the Holy Spirit. And in order for the Holy Spirit to operate on us, we need to find ourselves in a place. We need to get to a place to allow God to do that. But here is mercy, how good God is to us. Not that we deserve it, not because we're good. You see, because God put this in the past and had to go to the church, you know what? If you believe today, for this from last night to tonight to tomorrow, if you believe and you ask God for a new heart, for a new beginning, yes. for a new anointing, yes. you're going to get it. So we must, we must believe. Yes. And not only believe, you know, because we believe, we still believe in God. Mm. But we have to believe in the, the, the men that God has appointed and anointed and given a special privilege. Yes. To, to steward and look over yes. the house of Israel. Yes. So, we recognize that this, this restoration, this new heart, this new spirit, is the Holy Spirit that is going to come and write a new name on our heart. Yes. We want, what, what is the new heart that we want? We don't want a new heart. You see the human saying, it, 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 it say, you know, then, you know, and all my soul be loved. When you get to, you see when, you know, we go from having faith to living in God's sight, to seeing him, we cannot see God in the flesh. Amen. Amen. But, it is a place that like that, at that place, at that time, in that presence, all that is going to remain is love. Because this is what he is. Yes. Love is the nature of God. Amen. So the heart that we need to ask God for is a heart of love. You see, you, know, you just look at that. Eh? I will, will take out the heart of stone yes. and put it in your heart. That is where the only Holy Spirit can do that. Yes. It's not a, a literal thing. This is a spiritual thing. Thank you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Shooting that church of God, people of God, to become, to understand these things that we must be in a spirit. Yeah. And to live in the spirit is to live in prayer, to live giving thanks, singing psalms in your heart, being merry, making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Because we want a new, we want something new, a new beginning, right? So the heart that we're asking for, in essence, to me, that is, this is the just I get from your message. We need a heart to praise God. This is the new heart. We need a heart set free from unbelief. We need a heart from sin set free. Amen. We need a heart, we need to develop a culture of Teaching the word of hearing the word. Sometimes you know some people. We we we, we more important than pastor yeah. living the word. Yeah. But here's something, eh? yeah. You know, I love the rejoicing. I love the faith and all of that. But this, the rejoicing, is to bring us to the word. Yeah. It's to prepare the field for the preacher to bring the word. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I look at, I observe some people they ain't the shouting and the rejoicing and when the word come, they get. Yes. We need a new heart. Yes. Ask God to fix that in us. Yes. Yes. We want a heart that will be prepared to be seen. Yes. And you know, to you, Pastor Diaz, I pray that 
This message of restoration, I know that God will restore you first. Amen. And that He will restore this house Amen. to a great, 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 great nation. Praise God. You know? um, let brotherly love continue. I want to blow a trumpet before I take my seat. Yeah. To you, Mother Jennifer, and then between my mask and then the night to you. Because let me tell you something, church. We have no reason to worry, yeah? No, we have. Yeah, we don't really do have to worry because we have a hope that if we if we live right and we do what is requisite of us, yeah. that we are going to live with God. Yeah. When we oh, Christian, keep our good faith in
The cell phone can turn on, but if the battery is dead, the phone call won't be able to turn on, then you're going to charge it. With the spiritual heart, if your heart is not in tune, you have to plug into God to charge your heart. Also, like the battery, it can have many problems. Yes. For example, the battery might also go dead. Yes. The battery might be dead, like you won't yeah. have any energy anymore, you can't charge it. Oh. It might expand and oh. not work with the phone yes. anymore. Yeah. While with the coronal, while with the spiritual heart, there's sin. There's a lot of sin in the world that we can do, and we may not even know that we sin. Yeah. Therefore, we are kind of like a coronal heart. Because yeah, yeah. by nature, the heart is wicked. My Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, to get a new heart, you must accept Christ. You know. He will give you a new heart that will be able to love and share his love with everyone in the world. Amen. Because before, you couldn't do that because our heart was tainted with evil and wickedness and sin and hurt. Now, if you're to get a new heart, how would you maintain it? You can maintain a new heart by loving one another, by fleeing from lust, and by living in the assurance of our salvation. So, as the Bible says, I want us to love one another. Even though you may dislike someone, think of them with a clean slate. Hey. Try to befriend them. Don't hate them. Because at the end of the day, we are all children of God. Yeah. God wants to love, love each other genuinely. Not a fake love. It's just like, hey, hey, hi, how you doing? Yeah. No. We need a love. You need love like how you love your family, yeah. your friends. Amen. Some of you may know the, that love as agape, the pure and true love that Jesus intended to have. So that is how it, one way we can maintain a new heart. And then you can also maintain a new heart by being lost. And you can find this in the Bible in 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 22. Now, when I read this, I wasn't really sure what I meant by lust. Because most of the time you think of love, it's more of someone's attractiveness or beauty. But then when I really thought about it, it could be anything, an earthly desire. Because if we follow earthly desires and have no holy things, we will later then sin. For example, if a kid wanted a cookie but the parents said they cannot have a cookie, they'll try and take that cookie. And if they succeed taking the cookie, then what are they going to do after if the parent asks them to take the cookie? They're most likely going to lie, which is sin on top of sin. Yes. <laughs> if they get away with that, <laughs> the sin that they might do may be bigger or they will just repeatedly do it. And if they repeatedly do it, they're tainting, they're newly given hearts. Amen. The third way we can maintain our hearts is by living in the assurance of God. You can find this in the Bible in 1 John chapter 3, verse 19. Okay. So, I can kind of personally relate to this. Because I am not the most assurance person in the world. <laughs> That's something you may know. <laughs> I'm kind of late a lot. So, but I try. I try at least. Yes. Amen. So, by living in the assurance of God, we have to try, as I just said, to make, to live in His world, His life. Mm -hmm. Like coming to church on time, actually coming to church. Amen. <laughs> Come on. Praying, yes. reading the Bible. You know what they say? Pray a day, keep the devil away. A 
chapter a day can also keep the devil away. Yes. Amen. If you keep the devil away, you can't, you can't hurt us. You can't really mess with anyone. Right? And then the war would be over between God and the devil. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, if you are commonly late, as we saw, or just don't show up because you have work or something, yes. try to get a day off. Even if it's one Sunday in the whole month, do it and come and praise God. If you're late, try to set an alarm. Whatever you do in God, try. Because there's always a solution to a problem. There's never a problem without a solution. I'd like to leave off with um, the song, Come to see me, my blessed Jesus. Hear me, O Savior divine, open the fountain, and please, please me, give me your heart like thine. Verse 24. 
Let me get there real quick. From 24 to 27. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receive it, the prize. So run that game, male king. I want you to hear me clearly with that one. Because you see, with that one, in that, in that instance, I thought my life revolved around that. Okay? We are too busy trying to become first. You know, look the best. You know, but we're not taking the baby steps in order to get there. Even if you can't get there, we need to, you know, figure out what our purpose is, what we are learning. You praise the Lord? You know, I really like this verse because I just sit back and watch me, myself, and I, not others. I can talk about me. And at one point in time, I just try to look the best. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. But you see, within all of that, I was not focusing on what I learned, what I can do within this faith, what I can do outside, out to others. We praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, there's a little word called pride. But sometimes we just let pride take over our whole body. You know? We need to have some self-awareness with each other. You know, we need to have some self-discipline. Figure out what you are good at and what you are not good at. If we can figure out why we are here, I feel that the race that we are running in will be so much easier. I feel that doing the duty for the Lord will be so much easier and enjoying because that's what you'll be good at. Yep. Praise the Lord.
man is
Thank <laughs> you.